So good afternoon and welcome to this second public consultation webinar we have on Pearl Deggy Poultry Farm. Um, thank you for giving up your lunchtime today to, to join us for this and we will get going. Hopefully everyone can see my screen okay. So welcome everyone. Um, my name is Ian Boyd and I am a senior environmental consultant for SEC Consulting. Um, we are helping AviaGen with this planning application, doing the various environmental assessments and uh, the various planning documents and, and consultations that need to go along with that. Um, SEC Consulting provide independent expert advice on a whole range of agricultural, sustainability, environmental and, and planning matters. Also on the call today, we have Ivor Richmond. Ivor is head of pedigree operations at AviaGen and he will come on in a few slides time um, to give a little bit more information on who AvaGen are and what it is that they do. Um, the whole point of this today is to give an, an overview of the development, AvaGen and the whole planning process and where we are. Now this is the second of these webinars and um, so this will be a slight repeat of the first one if you missed that but then also what we're going to do is we're going to give a bit of feedback on some of the responses we've had and how we've gone and addressed that feedback and the various additional work we've done through this consultation period. There will be a Q&A session at the end, um, but if you have any questions throughout, uh, please ask them and we'll either take them there and then or we will take them at the end. Now, if you do want to ask questions, um, hopefully, you can all see this box here, which should have come up when you joined the call. Um, you have a few different options there. You have the Q&A tab, which would, would, would be our preference. And um, that way we have a record of all the various questions that have been asked. Um, it also, um, if you type a question to there, um, either myself or one of the organizers uh, will respond to you directly or we'll um, answer it in the Q&A se session. In addition to myself and Ivor, there's also Fiona Salter. She's in the background keeping an eye on any questions that come in and any technical difficulties. Um, you can also put it in the chat if you want. Um, you can either message the panelists directly um, if you don't want to make it public, and we can respond to you directly through that as well. Um, please remember that this webinar is being recorded. Um, the recording will be put online onto the consultation website um, after today. So this uh, public consultation we're doing, this pre-app public consultation, why is it that we're doing it? Well, it's because a proposal of application notice has been submitted to Perth and Kinross Council um, by AVGen for a new pedigree poultry rearing farm at their existing Pearl Deggie farm. Um, and because of that, that basically means that at some point in the future, a formal planning application will be submitted. So. The purpose of this public consultation is to explain why the site is being chosen for this poultry farm, describe the various studies and um, assessments that we're doing to fulfill the various planning requirements that we need to. It will provide some information about the function of the poultry farm and what it's going to be. And it also, this is the main point, and the main, most important part of today in this whole process is to get your comments, suggestions and feedback on the proposal. It's really important that we get any comments, um, whatever your views are, any suggestions or recommendations, any comments you have um, are really gratefully received. So please do that. And where does this sit in terms of the wider kind of development process um, of this farm? So it starts off with the initial need and design being identified um, by, by the developer. Um, and they'd consider various different locations and different sites and go with their preferred option. Once that's chosen, you go through some pre-application inquiries and screening with the local planning authority, in um, which we have done all that. Part of that is an EIA screening. Now, an EIA is a large environmental assessment that sometimes needs to be undertaken for major planning applications. Um, based on the, the nature of this development and the perceived impacts it's going to have, an EIA screening was not required. That does not mean that there's not various environmental assessments and work taking place. There is, it's just not going to be for, part of this formal EIA. We are still doing various environmental assessments and we will come on to that in a wee while to explain what those all are. 
That then leads on to beginning the kind of baseline surveys, the initial work to, to figure out the site, things like your topographical surveys um, and all your different environmental assessments that we're doing. That has begun and is currently underway. And we're in this public consultation and iterative design phase. That's when we're getting public feedback prior to it becoming a formal planning application. So at this stage of the process, this is where you send your comments, send any feedback directly to ourselves. And then it's up to us to go away, and address any concerns, maybe amend the design if required before it goes to the planning application stage. Um, once we submit a planning application, which will be some point this summer, um, it's then at the kind of formal stage where you can respond directly to the planning authority if you wish. So that's the stage where you can send in support or objection comments to it. It's also the stage where the planning authority, they look at all the information that's been submitted with the planning application and then they compare it against the local planning policy and decide whether or not the development can go and take place at that stage. If they decide that yes, it can go ahead, following that there'll be a construction phase um, later in the year using a local contractor. So um, yeah, our, as you can see on the right, these are the various different steps we've taken, the reference numbers, if you do want to go look them up online. Um, the public consultation phase is a minimum 12 week process. We have done the minimum 12 weeks now. Um, so we, within the next couple of weeks, we will be kind of finalizing that, doing a write up of all the feedback we've received and then looking to submit the formal planning application later this summer. Now, if we uh, explain the site a little bit more, um, some of you may know it quite well already, but there is an existing Aviagen farm. Um, it's Pearl Deggy Farm, which is near Creef. Uh, we have the postcode and the OS grid reference here, if you do want to go and look it up uh, on any maps afterwards. Um, but you can see here, this red dot where its location is. The existing farm looks very much like this with these sheds here at the back next to the road. Um, the development site is marked in red here. Um, the plan is to extend the site into this agricultural field in front of it. Um, so it will have a slightly larger footprint, but we will make use of the existing farm, the existing site um, layout as well. Um, the old buildings will be removed and new buildings built in its place. We will give a bit more detail on that um, later in this presentation. Why was this site chosen? Well, it is an existing poultry farm for a start, it's in a good agricultural setting. It's also in a good geographical setting in relation to the wider transport network and Avigen's other farms. Um, so also because it's um, fairly well screened and fairly well remote compared to nearby properties, um, all this kind of added together and made it a suitable site for a proposed development. And this is the existing farm here. Um, it is currently a breeder laying farm to produce fertile eggs. So it will be a slightly different function of the new farm as it becomes a rearing farm. We will explain that a little bit in a while. Um, and Iva will also go and explain a little bit more about the very kind of specialist operations that, that Aviagen does. It currently has 11,000 bird places. Um, so there will be a slightly in, slight increase in the number of birds. And um, this is what the existing farm looks like. They are fairly old sheds, old kind of timber construction. Um, it was built in the 60s with then one additional one shed built in the 80s. Um, the plan is to um, modernize the site and put more state of the art um, kind of current spec, current latest best practice and standards um, for a poultry farm um, will form the new development. And we'll show you what that looks like in a couple of slides time. Uh, so this is the proposal. Uh, like I said, Ivor will come on um, in, a, in a bit and explain a little bit more about Avagen and the kind of the various work they do and what the farm will be. You can see these are the existing sheds at the back here, and these are the four new sheds which will be built in front of it um, with the, this part forming part of the access um, and parking arrangements for the site. It'll be a new pedigree rearing farm um, consisting of four buildings, and each will have six thousand. 500 birds. So um, the site will be coming 26,000 in total. In addition to the, the sheds, you'll have various staff welfare and, and storage buildings forming part of the development. The buildings are state of the art, they're energy efficient, they're designed for maximum bird welfare and also minimizing any environmental impacts. 
and will comply with all the latest building standards. It's pedigree chickens that will be kept in the four sheds. Now, these are not reared directly for, um, for poultry meat, but they're for breeding stock you know, as part of Avergen specialist operations. Um, the farm's going to operate on a six month cycle, and uh, you'll have 26,000 birds arriving over approximately a six week period. You can see here uh, various features in addition to the things like a suds, which will help deal with all the drainage. There'll also be screening uh, and um, planting and stuff going around the sheds as well. So again, a little bit more information on, on where the, the setting and, and how it's going to change. Um, so here you can see the existing sheds and you can see the kind of field at the front where the, the new buildings are going to go. Um, there is obviously some existing woodland and, and trees around the site which, which will stay in place. It's really only this field here that's going to be developed. Um, there's also going to be a slight change in access. At the moment, there's currently three access options. It's just going to become one larger access route in here. Um, and existing poultry sheds, they will be demolished um, as part of the modernization of the site. And this is the proposed layout. So you have the sheds here, various features on them, like the ventilation fans um, and the covered walkways linking them all together. The, this is the profile of the sheds here. You can see they are quite low lying uh, structures. Um, there are also this juniper green color that's part of the kind of landscape and visual um, assessment work, trying to help it blend into the, the surrounding landscape. Now, all these drawings, um, they are obviously maybe not too clear if you're looking at in the PowerPoint, they are all available to you on the consultation website. Um, so if you go on there, you can download them and have a look at them in more detail. Final versions of all these will be getting submitted um, as part of the formal planning application and will also be available to view online once they are finalized. So now if we hand over to Ivor, who is going to tell us a little bit more about AvaGen and what exactly it is that they do. Thank you, Ian. If um, we go on to the next slide. So um, for those who have heard all this before, um, we, we sort of end up repeating ourselves a little bit, but AvaGen is a global primary breeder of meat chicken. So we're not, we produce eggs because we need to breed from them, but effectively we are in the business of selling meat for consumption by the public and the likes of Tesco's and Sainsbury's and Little and Aldi. Um, the pedigree breeding program is at the top of that pyramid. So in that regard, we know um, the parents of each of the progeny that we produce. Um, but this breeding program, there are two. There is one based here in Scotland, which we're very proud of, that started the whole thing um, way back in the 1950s. Um, but in that program, we have two types of birds. We have white feathered conventional breeds that um, people believe as normal broilers. But the demand nowadays is for more brown feathered, slower growing breeds. Um, we have developed our own strains of those that are still feed efficient, but actually fit more with the perception of the RSPCA and other groups that want to have a free range broiler um, and the, the customers in the marketplace demand these sort of choices nowadays. So we as a breeding company have to uh, fit the needs of the, the business and try and find solutions for all of our customers. Um, so what Aviagen do? So we are mainly in the, the business of producing and exporting breeding stock to, we, we supply within the UK, but we supply worldwide. Um, where we're based here in Scotland, it's easy to supply into the likes of Europe for grandparents, great grandparents or parent stock. Um, we have a hatchery down in Stratford-upon-Avon where um, we will hatch our chicks and transport those to local areas within the, the western part of Europe. If it's further afield, we would then send those eggs to different parts of the world. Um, the examples I give would be, we'll ship eggs to the likes of Australia because it's easier to ship eggs than it is to do chicks. Um, we do South Africa, we do um, various other parts from China. Um, and we do that on a daily, weekly basis. So there's something transporting in a plane or on a truck probably every day at some point during the week. 
So Abiogen, from my point of view, is, is a family-owned business. We are owned by the EW Group, the Eric weiss Johan Group. They are basically 80% agri-food business is what they do. Um, and we're set up in the early years of 19, the 1920s, I think. Um, we operate in over 21 countries worldwide. And as I said, we're very proud that the R&D headquarters of Aviagen is based here in Edinburgh. We have a sister company, Aviagen Inc., based in Huntsville in, in Alabama and Tennessee, um, two regions in America. Um, but we always like to think that the one that's here is the one that was first. Okay. So I mentioned about breeding. We talk about a pyramid. This is a pyramid turned on its side. But what you see at the left-hand side is Aviagen based in Scotland, um, looking at the genetic improvement and pedigree selection of our stock. We have a number of individual pedigree lines that are all selected for slightly different reasons so that we can fit the needs of the customer who wants more breast meat or wants better leg yield or wants greater livability. There's a there's a probably a strain in our portfolio that will accommodate most uh, customers. What you see here is the time scales. So if we select birds on a pedigree rear farm um, at this point in time, and the birds we select today, the customer won't see those until 2026. It's between a four and a five year period before it makes it into the the market that that you or I would buy to have our tea at home at night. Um, on that pedigree part, we have on the pedigree farms, every bird is identified. We know who its father is. We know who its mum is. We know its brothers and its sisters. Um, and we spend a lot of time collecting data. So it's all about quality over quantity. Yes, um, Ian mentioned about the numbers increasing, but these are in floor based pens um, providing data that is imperative to the success of the breeding program. Thank you. We talk about chickens. It's the focus on health, welfare, and sustainability. Um, pictures speak a thousand words. I've said this before. Uh, top left-hand corner is a farm manager on a pedigree laying farm, um, looking very proud with the number of different strains that we developed. So this brown chicken that he's holding in his hands, we developed in-house from other lines. For those that, that maybe know, um, brown can be the dominant color in some of the chickens. So if you allow it to express itself, some white chickens are predisposed to being brown. So selecting from the brown generates a, a new color. And, and some people believe that that looks much better. We also put focus upon the welfare. So the top middle is looking at the hawk burn and foot pads. A chicken that is happy, that walks well, that doesn't limp, is actually one that will perform better and not be distracted by other welfare traits. And that is very important in everything that we do, whether you're looking after cattle, sheep, or otherwise, the same principles apply. Um, top right-hand corner is the science part. Um, the welfare and sustainability talks about FCR, so feed conversion ratio. Um, in the top right-hand corner, we have chickens that have a choice to go into a feed station. They'll record every meal that they have, every time they go in and eat and eat two grams, five grams. The system will determine which chickens do best and how they perform and how efficient they are, bringing in this whole thing about sustainability. Um, which in the current, the, the way the world is going and the price of wheat and everything that we see as raw materials, um, this is very important for feeding the world as we talk about. Bottom left-hand corner, we have some of the little scientific things that you would see in hospitals. We, we like our eximeter because it measures heart rate and oxygen saturation. And, and actually the two guys standing there taking that photograph made me smile that day. The one in the middle is about um, gate scoring. It's one of the the key ways that we judge whether a chicken waddles or walks well, and if it carries the weight that it has in its frame well or badly. Um, and we score and judge on that basis. And finally, the one that is a bit of smiling, everything is about the chicken. We handle a lot of individual chickens each week. The rearing farm will be very similar to this in that we'll be weighing and handling birds at the end of their period before they're selected and go on to a pedigree lay farm. So we'll pick the best that move forward. Um, and as you see, everything's science-based. We're all touchscreen tablets. 
we're using every bit of technology that we can find to improve our selection, health and welfare. Thank you. Pictures. There's three pictures here and, and I put them on for a number of reasons. Brown chickens give variation that the outside world wants, um, but equally we are mainly a white chicken producing business. Um, but it's about the chickens, it's about the environment that we have them in, it's about the lighting. The one in the middle is about you know, nipple line drinking systems, chain feeding, feeding systems. These are all quite traditional. Everything that we do in the farm that, that we're proposing is on the litter. So there's, there's shavings on the floor that the birds can dig and dust and bathe in. This is the plan for this farm. So there'll be divisions. You see some wooden frames set in the background behind the farm manager in the picture. They'll divide the different strains. But this instance, we won't have any nest boxes because there'll be no eggs at this point. Okay. Aviagen, as I mentioned, pedigree breeding program in Scotland, very proud of that fact. We have over 50 farms in Scotland um, and there is an ongoing need to expand and continue to improve the facilities that we have. We have two laboratories um, just across in, in Broxburn and Livingston. Uh, one is moving at the minute um, and we employ in the region of, when we did this before, 650 staff in Scotland alone. Um, in the Perth and Kinross area where the, where the application and where we are operating for Pearl Diggy, we were employing 76. I see that now closer to about 79 as of this um, month. Uh, and I think it's, it, it's something that will continue to increase. The, the shortage of staff for every industry at the minute is, is a challenge. Um, and I think once people get into um, working in chicken farms, sometimes they, they didn't appreciate how um, positive that experience would be. So lots to do and lots of staff and chickens to look after. So what we're doing, Pearl Deggie, for those who, who know, has been a pedigree lay farm since a long time. 1980 was the new shed that was built. When I first appeared on working for Aviagen, I was a little management trainee and I spent, um, I think something three, four months initially at Pearl Diggy was the first farm that they placed me on back in the early nineties. Um, so I have a, 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 an affair with the farm and I remember working in the newest shed at the far side. Um, so what we're going to do is, is knock it down eventually, hopefully, and construct a new state of the art pedigree rearing farm. This will have birds that come in from five weeks to 20 weeks. As Ian said, it'll take six weeks to fill the farm up and roughly six weeks to deplete the farm at the end. And during the time whilst they're on the farm, we manage their body weight and try and prepare them to be breeding stock. So they came as broilers. They're a bit um, larger and chunkier than they need to be. So we do a bit of weight loss and body weight management through this period. So the farm is designed to manage the birds and their needs. Biosecurity in the world that has challenges with AI and other things at the minute, it's, it is important to everything that we do and every poultry producer within the country. So uh, enclosed spaces, covered walkways, these all add value and protect the livestock and the income of the staff and everybody else on that site. The integrated amenity and storage facility means that when the staff arrive on site, they'll shower on. Uh, so we operate a shower on, shower off policy. So they'll shower on, leave their civilians behind. Um, we give them their own uh, protective clothing to work in the facility. And that again helps protect the staff and what they do and protect the farm from any challenges from biosecurity or otherwise. As, as Ian mentioned, the layout and design will incorporate the latest technologies. And what that means is about computer controlled ventilation systems that are smarter today than they've ever been. Energy efficient heating. So we've got heating systems that still operate gas, but recycle that heat within the facility so that you're regenerating from what you've got. And, and LED lighting, everybody's doing that. And there's new technology for pedigree or for, for broiler farms and for chicken farms that allow chickens to develop better with um, more and more appropriate light colors. Finally, employment opportunities. Um, the farm will have a farm manager living on site, um, supported by two team leaders. We are very much into this development of staff on the farm and nine full-time staff. 
I say every time and, I, and every time I talk about it, I tell people the cleaner, there was a number of years gone past where, where we thought we would just use the staff to clean the farm and they would make do. But actually what we found is bringing someone in who does that and cleans the showers and cleans the canteens and looks after our staff, it's probably one of the best um, roles that we fulfill um, and appreciate it by everyone. So the welfare of our staff on the farm is paramount. If we have happy staff, we have happy chickens. It sort of works in that order. Thank you. Photographs, I've done this a lot. Um, so there are the farms that the, the farm that we're talking about at Pearl Deggy to replace the existing lay farm is not for broiler production. That is a common misconstrued idea that is a pedigree rear farm. So again, birds are just there from five weeks to 20 weeks. We're trying to prepare them for their laying phase. So uh, girls to lay eggs and boys to be fertile. That is the aim of that farm. The farm, however, is built with an ex a lifespan in excess of 40 years. The one picture in the middle is, is a farm outside Creef um, and is a pedigree rearing farm. So a four shed farm. It is three sheds of older design that were built in the 1990s. And the recent new shed added to the site uh, built in 2018. So this is probably one of the best descriptions I can give of what we aspire to build. Um, you can see all the number of cars parked along the staff that are coming to the site. Um, and you can see how I aspire to have tidy farms. Um, my parents were farmers. I grew up on a farm and my dad was somewhat um, very clear about keeping machinery in its place and tidying up after ourselves. And I've tried to aspire that to everything that we do. The bottom left hand corner has a, a farm in East Lothian. It's a pedigree lay farm. But again, my picture is it's three sheds, um, but it's how we fit into the environment. We try and keep it tidy. We try and keep it neat. We try and fit in with the environment and, and be good neighbors. That's where we all benefit from this. Um, and hopefully that will be in our intention to continue with the Pearl Diggy site and be good neighbors. Okay. Final. So we have four pedigree rear farms at the minute. The number isn't going to increase. We just expanded on two of them on the site and land that we had. So again, a picture of, of where the four shed comes. Three sheds to the right were built in 1996. The new shed on the left was built in 2019. You can see the covered walkways going between each of the sheds, and you can see the amenity area to the right-hand side of the picture. So staff would come in, they would park, um, the, the car park is off the, the picture at the minute, um, but they would park, they'd walk down, they come through the showering amenity area, uh, and then once they're in, they can access any of the sheds during the day. The same aim would apply for the, the planned uh, change at Pearl Diggy, um, but a four shed example, this is probably the best one I have that's real. So hopefully that, that makes. One of the things that is probably important to us is how we've done the landscaping. I could probably do with a new um, picture overhead, but the soil area at the back has now all been planted up with trees and actually it's um, aspiring to look very nice. So um, thank you for that. And finally, Abby and Jen are about um, people. We're about chickens. That's what we aspire to do. Um, we supply a lot of chickens around the world in different places, but but chickens are our, um, it's where we all begin. And it's it's the people who work with that want to work with chickens. All of these smiley faces of people as in pens with chickens. Um, Probably the, the one in the middle at the bottom is probably indicative of the size of the birds that you would have, although they're brown, and we'll have some brown ones there. They would be smaller during the rearing phase. Um, they aren't big birds, but the attention to detail, every bird, we know who its parents are, and we need to try and extract the best potential from each one of those. There is a, another poultry company that talks about the happy egg. I genuinely believe that a happy chicken will perform well. So to be happy, we have to give it the environment, the attention to detail, the feed, the water, um, all of these things make what we do well. 
Thank you very much, Ian. Thank you for that, Ivor. Um, just a reminder, if you do have any questions, please pop them into the Q&A tab and we will get them um, at the end of the session. Um, so yeah, where are we currently? So the current work that's undertaking on site. Um, so we're in this public consultation, pre-app consultation. Like I said, we've done the minimum 12 week requirement for that, but we're extending it slightly. Um, we are still looking for feedback. Um, so please, if you have any comments to make at all, please do get in touch with us for that. Um, the various environmental assessments we're doing. So like I said earlier, we are undertaking various assessments on the site to quantify any potential impact and to come up with any mitigation measures that we need to. Um, so what we're doing is a, a noise impact assessment. Um, so there are going to be, like Ivor said, this computer controlled ventilation system on the fans. Um, these fans um, potentially, if they are not operating correctly or are too close to properties, um, can create noise. So a noise impact assessment has been undertaken um, to quantify that and again, provide any mitigation if required. Same for odour and dust. Um, there's an assessment and, and management plans getting put in place. Um, there is an existing poultry farm there already. So um, in terms of impact and things like that, it won't um, change drastically, but um, we still need to do these various assessments um, to, to quantify that. The it's an archaeology and cultural heritage assessment. Now, this is in response to some of the feedback we have received during this public consultation. Um, I will go on to talk about that um, in a couple of slides time. In addition to these um, environmental assessments, there is a kind of general supporting document that will be submitted to the planning authority. In that, I will give a, a summary of, of the site and its function. It will tell you things like the transport and access to the site, um, the various jobs, visual impact, any ecology and, and biodiversity issues as well. So um, all of that comes together um, to kind of form the planning application. In addition to the various surveys we're doing, um, so for example, we've done a topographical survey. This is a photo of us there undertaking that. Um, there is also various drainage designs and um, site designs, and that's all been um, advised and informed by various site visits that um, consultants and experts are, are undertaking. So, so far, this presentation has been pretty much identical to the first one we did. Uh, it's just a, a repeat of it to, to give people an opportunity if they missed the previous one to, to find out about the development. Um, but also in this presentation, we want to explain some of the feedback we've currently received and then how we've addressed that through this process and how we will continue to address it. So if you do have any comments to make, please do that. And it's up to us to go away um, uh, and make sure that we've covered any comments um, and report back to the planning authority as well um, how we've done that. So one of the main things we always get asked is about access and traffic um, to the potential site. So we've um, we mentioned this in the first webinar, we would go away and, and provide you with a bit more information this time around on that. Um, so in terms of access arrangements to the site, um, you can see here what the main access routes in are. There's one from the north, um, which comes from the A85 down um, Highland Man Lone and then left into the north of the site here. Um, this route at the moment is, is mostly for um, feed lorries and a few egg lorries. They tend to do this route. There won't be any egg lorries with the new site, um, so they'll be, um, they'll be going, um, but the feed lorries will remain on this route. Majority of egg lorries at the moment, um, they come from the south down the B8062, so um, they won't be there um, for the new site. Um, there will be a reduction in vehicles overall. The next slide will show that. Um, and then things such as visitor traffic or um, staff vehicles, they could go in potentially any direction depending on where it is that they live. Um, for the actual access to the site itself, at the moment there is three potential access options in. Um, what's been proposed is to get rid of two of these. So there'll only be one access into it. Um, which will give clear lines of sight um, and a big open junction here, provide access to the, the total site. So we'll be reducing the number of access options there. So it's focused on one, uh, one option, which should make it a bit safer. Um, and yeah, 
give a proper access for all the lorries and, and visitors and everyone accessing it. And then in terms of um, actual journeys, so this is something we, we were asked last time and we said we would quantify it. It's a bit of a busy slide, but if you um, bear with me, on this side here is the, the current lay farm and the various movements of the, the vehicles as it is currently. On this side here, this is what's been proposed for the rearing farm. The main thing to take away from this is that there, there will be a reduction in traffic of about 33%. So there is slightly less um, staff cars on the site. Um, the main thing that's different though is these egg lorries. So there's gonna be a lot less lorries traveling to the site um, on a regular basis. Um, some of the things will stay the same. For example, feed, feed doesn't change too much. So, so those journeys will remain. Um, visitor cars here as well, slightly more visitor cars. That includes things like um, health-based sampling and, and things like that. Visitors will come to the site for the various parts of research that are getting done there. So yeah, this all this information will form part of that supporting document that's submitted to the planning authority. Um, so these tables and a bit of further explanation will be in that document, which you can read um, once it's submitted and put online. But the, the general takeaway from this is that on the whole, there will be um, about a third less vehicle movements um, for this proposed new farm. Um, the other kind of main bit of feedback we, we had, so as well as contacting all the nearby properties in approximately one kilometer of the site, and uh, we also contact various consultees. So those consultees include local councillors, community council, SIPA, uh, Nature Scott, and Historic Environment Scotland were, were one of them as well. Um, and they came back to us and they didn't have any comments to make at this time, but they requested that we speak to Perth and Kinross Heritage Trust. So we did that, we consulted with them, and they came back with this recommendation that in the wider area, there is potentially some, some sites of kind of archeological and historical heritage interest. Um, so they recommended that it'd be good to have a desk-based assessment done um, off the site, including this um, historic environmental record extract to, to just kind of quantify what the potential would be for there being anything of interest in, in the vicinity. So we have employed an, an archeologist to do this for us. Um, he's mostly complete. Um, we haven't got the full report yet, but it's, it's mostly complete and should be completed shortly. Um, he's done his assessment and so far what he's found is actually, he's been looking for features like crop marks or any potential for below ground features. Um, and there's nothing on the development site and there's nothing even in the, the wider field where the development is taking place. Um, he has extended it out to about one kilometer. Um, you can see the nearest potential site is, is over here, on the other side of the woodland. But um, that work is ongoing, and we will continue to work with the archaeologist um, throughout the whole planning process, uh, who will continue to advise us um, on, on any potential heritage issues there could be. So that is uh, two of the main kind of comments we've had so far and, and how we've addressed them. Now, we do want more feedback if we can get it. So this is how you can engage with us here. We do have uh, the consultation website. Um, it's a screen grab of it here on the right-hand side. On that website, you have all the various planning documents um, we've created so far. So you have your various pre-app consultation letters, your public information boards, your, your site plans, and um, all of them are available to view in detail online there. We also have um, a recording of the, the first webinar. This has been recorded and this will go online also um, after this. So um, if you know someone that wanted to be here today but couldn't attend, um, if you direct them towards this website, um, they will be able to view the recording of today on there as well. We have an email address, which is pearldeggy underscore consultation at sec.co.uk. If you have any comments, any questions, um, please send us an email and uh, we will respond to you and give you feedback on that. And that will also form part of the reporting we do to the council. And um, we have to mention all the different comments and, and suggestions that people have made. If you'd rather speak to someone face-to-face -face, um, or over the phone, this is my phone number here. Um, it's a direct line to myself. Um, 
you can either speak to me directly or leave me a message and I will call you back and, and discuss whatever you want with you. Uh, so please pick up the phone if you'd prefer that. Or if you'd rather do it in writing, this is our office address here. Um, Pearl Diggy Consultation, SEC Consulting, Technical Centre, Penny Cook. Um, if you send us the letter there, again, we'll pick that up and we will respond to you. And again, that will feed into the, the, the whole pre-app process. The main thing is that we do really want your feedback. We have had some comments on this so far. We haven't had a great deal, so it would be good to get a few more kind of public cons, um, comments and stuff in addition to the various consultee comments that we've already received. So please, if you do have anything to say, please do get in touch with us. And on that note, if we have any questions here today, please, this is your time um, to ask them. I don't see any so far in the Q&A tab, um, but if you do have anything, please jot it down now. Um, there was a few we've been asked, generally speaking. Um, one was about the, the when will the documents be finished. It, it, it's um, the process we're going through at the moment is to try and finalize everything and um, take into account all the feedback we've had and tidy up all the reports. So over the next few weeks, we will be finishing um, all of our reports. Once they're all finalized, they will be submitted to the planning authority and they will be viewable through the, the plan, Perth and Kinross planning portal. Um, we will update the consultation website with the planning reference number so you can find it easily as well. Um, there was one last time I remember, Ivor, which was, was quite a good question, was about why is the building not on the existing footprint of the site? I don't know if you want to comment on that first. We've, you know, for those who, who know where it is, it is actually very, very close to the road. And, and you saw some of the other pictures of the, the one at uh, West Lothian, the one where we wanted to set it back from the road to, to, and the aim would be to either grassland that at the front, there'll certainly be a bit of access at the front to the sheds, um, but try and make that fit in nicely. The hedge I'm planning to leave, if, if we get approval, that will all stay and we'll just try and set it further away from the road. As, as Ian said, one entrance, so that if you drive past, there is the one in front of the farm, then there's the one where the staff enter, and then there's the one for the farm managers at the bottom. It's always a bit of a controversial one right at the corner. So I think shutting it, setting the farm further back from the road and giving one entrance will just make line of sight for all the trucks coming in and out much better. So just aesthetically fixes the site um, and gets us away from the road a little bit. That was purely where my thoughts were. Yeah, thank you. And it will make use of the existing site as well, the existing yep. footprint of sheds. So, so, so that, on your drawings, you had um, the the vehicles will access the sheds from the front, so the feed will come in along where the existing houses are, or certainly the, the newest one, the one by itself, you'll drive along, that will be like a roadway at the front to gain access between the buildings where the, the amenity link buildings are, so where the feed would be delivered, etc. Um, so that's it. Perfect. Um, well, I don't actually see any further questions. If you do have anything you want to ask afterwards, um, like I said, please do get in touch with us on the contact details provided. Um, we will respond to you if you think of any questions you have later on. Uh, our recording of this will go online again, so you can go back and refer to it if you do need to. But unless there's just any further questions, uh, I'd like to thank Ivor for his time today. Uh, I'd like to thank Fiona for all our hard work in the background. And thanks everyone for joining us and for giving up your lunchtime. Um, on that note, we'll say bye and thank you. Ian, thank you very much. Cheers.